Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP. This is issue 103 of Mini Truck and Magazine, July 2000. There's a lot to talk about with this one. If you stay with us to the end, I'll share with you how many Ford vehicles have been on the cover of Mini Truck and Magazine. So, this red Ford Explorer graces the cover. I did hint when we had... Rob Maggion, who owned Master Image Customs. Of course, this was a showstopper. And um, this is one from their, you know, their builds. And uh, this was, for those scoring at home, the only Ford Explorer on the cover of any truck and magazine. Now, again, at the end, I will cover how many Fords, you might be surprised, had been on the cover up until this point. One other fun fact, this is one of one covers that has something on it. I'll cover that at the end as well. Um, so again, uh, stick with us at the end and uh, we'll cover some more uh, details. I appreciate all of the support here. We have grown tremendously over the past year. We're not only going to go through all these magazines, but we're also going to go through other publications and we've got so much more planned. So uh, keep it posted. Make sure you subscribe. You can see the table of contents starts to change a little bit. We talked about the changing of the guard with Lance becoming the editor, and we saw kind of subtle changes thus far. Boldly go where no mini trucker has gone before. The full custom make your mouth water limbo was uh, done to this 96 Explorer on 20s Master Image Customs. And uh, also this was Wes Allison's 22nd credited cover you see the events there in the special section hot wheels uh you can see here i haven't talked about the color aspect of the magazine because we're not actually believe it or not in the year 2000 we're technically not to all color yet if you can imagine uh it's crazy but we just gotta we'll, we'll keep going through these and i'll talk about that when we get there Mini truck and news, so you can see they pack in a lot of content. Clerks revisited. This is an excerpt from an online source, which was an old, old ALL group. Very nice one. I asked if I could take some photos of this place. You're not the first person to ask, she said, with something to over chuckle. Hundreds of people come here to look around. And you can see here mini truck and magazine i always talk about that clerks um movie i just wanted you guys to see that uh clerks is a great movie if you're younger and you want a cult classic from the 90s look up clerks kevin smith's first uh feature film and um i should have talked about it on our year-end wrap-up because honestly it was one of my favorite movies of 2023 and i know you're scratching your head that was clerks 3 uh, if you're a clerks fan and you haven't checked out clerks 3 yet definitely do that here is Wilt Built, so we've seen that name, and this is the first opportunity that we get a chance to see the taco. So Tuck and Taco, this one's known as. I've got photos of it from ITB. I've posted some of those in the past, and even though they're not active on Instagram, if you go to the Indie Truck Bash page and you look at the photos that they've been tagged in, I think I've tagged them more than anyone else with a lot of gold. So anytime I post ITB, AKA Indie Truck Bash photos, I do tag that Instagram account. So if you want to go check those out um, from Tuck and Taco, you can see right here is the Mazda that we saw in the last issue doing the burnout. So um, super clean. Again, even getting into the 2000s, uh, there's definitely some topless minis out there. And I love still seeing them, including our good friend Steve's Mazda that we will no doubt see at Mini Nats. And I wanted to throw out, uh, if you haven't uh, thought about coming up to Southeast Mini Truck and Nats, please do so. That's going to be unreal. And it's uh, the third weekend in April. So check this out. This name obviously comes right to mind. Jamie Swift, Mini Truck Cult. And he's got a kind of a transitioned into like a movie type podcast that he's doing and just pop culture stuff. Uh, check him out. But dude, this guy's got, if you check him out on Instagram, Jamie Swift or Mini Trucker Cole, I think he's posted under a couple of Instagrams. Dude's got more mini trucks and freestyle and BMX bikes than pretty much anybody I know. 
This is Russell Galow. It fell, and I can't remember if Russell is still around. Um, for some reason, there's something that comes to mind, but I, I don't know, so I'm not going to say it. But um, if anybody has any information on Russell, please comment there. You can see he was in Severed. Uh, the big thing with that truck is the shaved body line, which is kind of crazy. Again, we see Great Ride. Ironically enough, th this publication was, um, and, and really the the whole um, at this point they transitioned from what was it McMullen Argus to they were Prime Media at this point, and they did a good job in the early days trying to reinforce this was their website. Uh, ironically enough, that was kind of ahead of its time and trying to get people online. When we had Ronnie on from Flat Out DVD, shout out to Ronnie. Uh, he talked about, you know, just being at the infancy of digital content and DVDs and stuff. And it just really, he couldn't really get any uh, sponsors and things like that. The ironic thing is there's still these publications like even Street Trucks is trying to drive their online content all these years later, 23 years later after this. And I don't know that anybody's got it down. Uh, social media has just taken over with content and you'll often see just various truck pages with hundreds of thousands of followers. And I sometimes kind of feel like the, some of the publications were behind the times. These guys, I don't think necessarily were, but this was at the infancy. Um, one thing I will say, um, you could take it any which way you want, but the Motor Trend website, which you know where all the mini truck and content lives, the website is horrendous. I mean, just not good. I mean, I'll often, if I'm looking for content, uh, I'll be on Google Images. And of course, I click the image to, you know, to give credit to the site. And if you ever land on that old website, God, it is not good. And I try to keep things positive, but that website, to me, um, they could do a lot to it. But that's just my opinion. Diversion. So here is a taco, technically called an extra cab. Well, no, excuse me, a 98 to Toyota Tacoma extra cab. Um, he had, I think before, and this was Chris Bostic, Mr. Boom Bostic, some little shaggy there for you. But, um, of course that's a regular cab truck. What am I thinking? APC ads. It's kind of cool. These clear taillights. I was looking at, uh, a video. I got to watch Johnny Garage Johnson doing a, uh, unboxing. It's kind of crazy how the uh, clear taillights are, are still a thing, um, I didn't know that they would ever kind of come back around, but they definitely look good on, on certain trucks. A rally, so you can see Lance does this right up. And uh, good stuff there. Again, tech articles like that you could do all the time because, you know, it was stuff that was key about balancing wheels and mountain tires and stuff. Craig Frazier, obviously we've had him on a couple times. We consider him a friend of ours. And uh, Craig has always been at the forefront of new stuff and uh, these books and VHS tapes and stuff like that were gold back in the day. You can see something wicked this way comes. And of course, last look right there. Uh, but uh, he's working for Daniel Woodlands. And um, if you could follow them on Instagram, they're doing some cool stuff. 3D printing stuff, going to trade shows. They recently 3D printed a whole bunch of He-Man stuff, like life-size so it's pretty crazy to think uh, where things are at now. Here is the Ford Ranger with Nietzsche wheels. I think we recently saw Go Big or Go Home. Mike Self was involved with this one and uh, kind of reinforcing some of the backspacing stuff. That was always a key thing. Still a big question that often comes up. What backspacing do I need? Of course, when I bought the uh, wheels for my Lincoln, 64 Lincoln, uh, of course, I chose Colorado Custom Wheels. Michael and team were great. And uh, Michael had a whole list of all the backspacings he had ever made for the Lincolns. So uh, he asked me the right questions to make sure that, hey, if I'm ever upgrading the brakes in the future. But that's kind of what you get from some of these companies like Colorado Custom Wheels these days. Looks like Purgatory Wheels. And Lance's Dakota. I think it's still around, my understanding. The Devil's Advocate. So this was the one that I think we saw recently in graffiti. And I would always forget the gentleman, the, the guy's name, Chris Fleece, F-L-E-E-C-E. -E -E. 
I do believe someone mentioned that Chris may no longer be with us. And I, I say that with reserve because I, I don't like saying that unless I know that, but I, someone has mentioned that to me. So I don't know a hundred percent. Again, I try not to normally say that, but someone could chime in. This truck was, uh, you could see right here, this is where Rob's was shot. And I kind of talked about that. Now the photo that I showed at the end of the Rob Scepter May 2000, um, I do want to be clear that that wasn't 100% lined up where Rob's truck was. I went to a couple spots because the tree is gone. And I know for a fact that that was not the exact spot. But where we went over to where I remember, it's different because the tree is gone. But bottom line is, it was close. And this truck is sitting in the same spot where it was shot. I think even Joey and Heather's was shot in this very same spot, their Tacoma that uh, ran in sport truck. A lot of the the guys like Jim Aust and Lance and things went, and whatnot, you know, they they naturally probably use some of the same backgrounds or, you know, right next to it. Uh, very similar to when people go to the salt flats after SEMA. You know, a lot of media and stuff is out there doing their thing. Uh, they just need a clear background. Uh, I remember him cruising by uh, in this thing, and um, I did get this one mixed up. I thought this one was the one with Miata door handles. Um, clearly, it doesn't have Miata door handles, but there was another truck, and maybe I'm thinking of a Mazda. I do get them mixed up. But uh, this truck reminded me of Bruce Rivera's because of the color, and of course, it looks good with the shaved corners. Of course, there's a better shot right there. Uh, Lance shot this. And uh, this was a truck that you'd see cruising around uh, in Florida, uh, especially that was shot right here in my uh, hometown area. KMC wheels, some of the ads there pushing the sister publications. Halloween Bash 3, so Eddie Pritchard and Mike Self. And if you like what we're doing here, leave a comment. Many of you often leave comments, and again, we are growing Tremendously, you see reds. Here looks like Caldwell's blazer before some of the changes, including the wheels and two-tone. Eventually go on to uh, run in street trucks. Lows in the 20s, so that kind of tied into what we saw earlier in the TOC table of contents. Uh, lows in the 20s, which 20s were becoming super popular at this point. Um, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you listen back to rap songs, it's crazy, like I've said in the past, you know, you hear DeBrat and Notorious Big, uh, you know, talking about rolling swole on 17s and 18s. And you'll hear, you know, as the years progress, 20s, 22s, rolling Mike Jordan's 23s. It's crazy how all that kind of uh, corresponds with the different years. This thing was super clean. Again, something a little bit different. Uh, Lance was bringing his own spin. You can see Showstopper on the license plate. Nice little subtle graphic. Momo wheels. M-O-M-O. Uh, -M -O. I think technically is it all caps? I always would, would mention it in all caps. That's what it says in, in the pub publication. Something a little bit different again from MIC. You can see super clean, full interior. That's one thing I tip my cap to Rob and team. I mean, they did a lot of builds. Their clients were like, hey, we want it all. And uh, super clean engine bay. Shout out to Mike Hill. Mike uh, had the last, well, after the Mav before the Maverick, he had the last mini truck on the cover of Street Trucks. And it was a Ford Explorer. And I would, off the top of my head, probably say that's the only Ford Explorer that's ever maybe been on the cover of Street Trucks. Check out the box. I mean, this era, I think, is awesome. I mean, you could easily pull up with this interior and probably win, um, you know, close to best to show interior at a lot of shows. Lance, it uh, seems like, and Mike, self, um, they, you know, they would spend the time and they had some damn good write-ups with a lot of content. So that would have been key. Again, internet would have been kind of getting bigger at that point, but you'd want the details and the feature. And I would read these like there was no tomorrow. Speaking of MIC, you got don't sweat the technique, the VHS, which were still popular. Here's a four-year-old doing his thing with the Wilt built Toyota on the cover, the Michelin man, what's in the CD changer. Think about if we had a mini truck and magazine now, it would be like, what's in the Spotify playlist? You know, what's in the Apple Music playlist? It's kind of crazy. So Hot Wheels isn't what you thought. This actually tied into kind of the wheel and tire special type deal. Um, if we flip back to the cover, 
you got the auto bond sweepstakes, but so you see custom wheel and tire special. So I did want to mention um, that kind of after the fact, but this was big because it kind of showed you what was coming. And uh, some people would literally cut these out. There were some issues that we saw early on. Uh, these inkies, I think were the ones that Matt Torgerson, shout out to Matt. Uh, I believe that I know he had inkies. I think these were the ones that were on his van. The nemesis, uh, Joey Whitby, shout out to Joey that owns uh, Relax Taco, which I like to call Hard Taco. If you see Joey Whitby or you see us, you know, comment and, and say you like the Hard Taco, uh, that ties into something I'll talk about later down the road. But he loves those wheels, and of course, there they are, the KMC Nemesis. And you got a few more wheels, according including the Boyd Connington's, the Eagles, Eagle Alloy. Those are affordable. I think they're still around, maybe. Got, of course, not just wheels, but tire special. And uh, lots of different tire options, of course. Here's Pleasures, so Slambery. And you can see there, we saw, I think that's the truck we saw at Scraping the Coast uh, a couple years ago. Thing, uh, Same owner, still been around. There's the uh, famous Nissan. This thing was super clean. Reminds me of the, was that the Platinum Concepts? There's, of course, the the Nissan that I talked about the other day with one of the um, couple that had Billet Specialty wheels on the cover. There's the famous, I'm trying to blank on whose this was, but uh, I know that truck, and then you see lower level. Uh, man, dude, I mentioned this on the podcast. I love those tailgates, man. It looks, it looks like awkward, but it, maybe it's a nostalgia thing. I liked how it kind of went in like that. Um, I guess it could drive you crazy. I'm surprised it doesn't on my OCD that it doesn't line up to the to the tail light there. But still, I guess that's just that original S10, old school S10, square body S10, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's that look. Here you see Slam Bree. They've always had just awards that were fire. And as speaking of awards that are awesome and fire, uh, we'll be at Lone Star Throwdown in just over a week, and uh, their awards from um from phil uh phil are just amazing phil built so picture perfect this was chad gill so just peachy you can see the nc logo this is timeless uh you know you look at the wheels these are the colorado custom val d's one of my favorite they were also on ryan fringling house's uh mazda the maz dog but I mean, how timeless, I, I, for those that don't know, I had a topper on my S10 back in the day, had a similar box set up. I mean, a lot of us got hooked into mini trucks with a setup like that. And you can see the Valdez wheels right here, 17s. But uh, check out that interior though. Super clean, badass truck, timeless, just a good look. And uh, Chad Gill, we know his name comes up from the, uh, the Maryland crew. Those amps, you know, looking in those back windows and just seeing the tweed and the amps and stuff, dude. That just gets me going, man. I love seeing all the old school stuff come back. Kentucky Fried, so special events, uh, throws down in Lexington. Uh, and we can see here, uh, Scared of Heights. I kind of butchered uh, the shout out to them last time. Uh, Scared of Heights on Instagram. Thanks, guys, for always chiming in. Uh, but this was um, Mooney. Uh, so the guy that ended up having the Suburban, um, you know, I guess I'll usually comment about that, but they, they did reinforce what my mind is usually thinking that that was his Isuzu. This one we'll see more of again in the, in the near future. We got to get the homie on Dustin, right? And, um, uh, got a chance to hang out with him at mini Nats uh, a year or two ago. Speaking of mini Nats again, we're going to be there, dude. We cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. We hope that you guys will come up. Here is the Pro Street Yoda that we recently saw. And, of course, you get the ladies. Here we can see a blazer, newer body style. Um, if you are new here, check us out on a podcast app. It's free. Just search OLP or Our Lifestyle Podcast. We talk about mini trucks, and, of course, we are uh, going to hit our eighth year can't even believe it this august lord willing of course 
and uh, we'll get sideways into our ninth here. This was Bill Thompson, so his name synonymous with car audio. Here we start to see, again, more color. So you've got color now. Um, I don't know if this was the first issue necessarily, but I'm just mentioning it. Um, so you can see that there. Uh, do add over here. I had this shirt for years. Finally got rid of it. I mean, it had so many holes in it. I had worn it. Uh, it was one of my favorite shirts, and uh, that was a, a gray shirt for a long time. It was the only gray shirt I had, really, that I wore. Uh, here's Built Specialties, their GT series that they launched a little bit more, I think, affordable. And shout out, check this out. I was just messaging with the big homie, Chuck Dog earlier. He was checking out, probably anticipating this issue because the Peach Izuzu Rob's Rest in Peace was on uh, issue 101. And here you go, more peach. This was known as Peaches and Cream. For those that don't know off the top of my head, I think it was also on Euro Lowrider cover. Um, so that was kind of a rare pub publication. Uh, you can see there he's got the mini truck and logo, the the, the current or uh, current logo at that time. You can see the palm trees in the back. Speaking of trees, you can see the tree there. This was shot in the same area. And uh, Lance and Mike shot this. And again, nice backdrop. Perfect what you need with something like this. And uh, you can see Chuck had spent a lot of time on this thing. We believe, I believe I saw it at Nopi. He's rolling on 18s. Chuck now has a van. Uh, he's uh, rolling with NC. That was a mod that guys were doing at that point. Putting the turn signal here. But uh, this was the era of, um, you know, cars like this. Uh, nicknamed Chucky. It's one of my big homies. Shout out, Chuck. Appreciate you, dog, for always supporting. Okay. Did I not notice this in the last issue, or is this the first issue? Okay, I'll have to go back and look. This photo, I've always wanted to talk about this, and I knew we'd get to it. I can't believe we're on issue 103. This photo right here might be in more mini trucking magazines than any other photo. Now, I haven't counted, but this was taken right here in Tampa. I remember when I first noticed this, that photo, I have a photo of a truck I think right here is the white S10 that Matt Torgerson body dropped. There was a guy named Brandon that owned it. I think he did like a two and a half inch body drop or two and three quarters on it. Uh, it had a white topper. But this um, photo was taken in Tampa, probably right around the, probably the year that Rob's truck, all those trucks were shot not too far from that exact spot. But this photo stays in this section for a very long time. And it might actually be uh, the photo an image <laughs> that was in more issues. Uh, if anybody knows someone that was that was standing there or ever recognized themselves back in the day, uh, it's kind of hard to see. Obviously, it's a small black and white, but um, we'll keep track of that, I guess, as we go. The new chapter, Road Dot Diaries. So I'll kind of go over this. Again, you could bump it to 4K if you need to or if you want to to get uh, screen grabs. Appreciate when you guys give us credit. I know the uh, Viper, Elite Viper Wheel Appreciation page always does. So thanks to the big homie. Live Live Topless, boom, with the Mazda. And again, there were a few Mazdas that were Cab Plus and Topless. Dude, that's a heavy top to take off. And um, real nice truck here, another Mazda. This was taken at Showfest. I was if I if I remember correctly, I want to say it was because I remember I was there. I appear in one of the graffitis, which I kind of forgot about. I was with Kool Aid, and he yelled out to Lance, "Graffiti!" And Lance remembered that, and Lance put it in there. But I, re if I recall, this is right at uh, Greenville. Now there were a bunch of hotels like this, so this might not have been, but there were some taken just like this at Greenville um, for Showfest. But. Um, that's my thought. Toyo Tire, kind of a cool different ad. Got the sexiness going on there. And so uh, so I don't forget. Um, so what was I going to share with you guys? Basically, there, this was the seventh Ford. Believe it or not, only seven Fords on the cover of Mini Truck and Magazine. I also mentioned Momo Wheels. This is one of one cover. That's right, one mini truck and magazine cover with Momo wheels on the cover truck. 
that doesn't count any insert photo or anything like that that is on the cover truck itself 269 uh, the group photos, I always mention, I kind of look at what's the prominent. Sometimes there's two vehicles, things like that. If there's two vehicles, obviously, you know, I, I track the wheels on both of those. But if it's a main cover and there's one prominent vehicle, that prominent vehicle gets kind of the, the photo cover credit um, from a database standpoint. Appreciate all the support. I'm going to go ahead and flash here if you want to subscribe. Thank you for listening. We out you.